ladies and gentlemen. Anyone wants to play more Book of Unwritten Tales? Well, I want to, so. We are still with Wilbur, and we have lots of stuff. And, um, this is Nemo. We are looking for a helmet for heroes, which is our pot. A map of the region, and now we want a parachute. So, we want the, um... We want the, uh, we want this. I think, but I'm not sure how to get it. Look at the roll. Roll? What? A rolled up tarpaulin. Oh. Probably just like the ones hanging all over the place. Oh, this one. Okay, I can take that one with me. Cool. Yeah. We got ourselves a parachute. I'll thread the rope through the eyes around the edge of the tarpaulin. Done. Come on. Let's see. If I pull the rope through the eyes on the rucksack... Yes, that should work. There we go. A parachute. We got everything. All right, Grandad. And that's the last of my gear. I must get back to Grandad. Fast. Yes. Hello, Grandad. We are on our way to town. Seastone. And down we go. Alright, Grandad. Hello, Colonel Grandpa. Um, excuse me, Colonel Grandad. Yes, report back. I have the pot. Um, um, helmet. Excellent, soldier. The helmet will protect you from physical attacks. You can even sit on it and use it as a saucepan. Ooh, how practical. Let me see your helmet. It's not all that great, I know, but... What? It's a good helmet, and it's going to protect a good soldier. That is, of course, as long as the enemy doesn't attack with dragons, or has wizards in its ranks, or magical swords, and doesn't go for your head. Maybe I should look for some armor with magic. Poppycock! That helmet will do. <laughs> I got a map. Excellent! My commanding officer always said good maps are half the battle. Of course, you won't be needing it if everything goes well. If what goes well? But if not, it's always good to have a map with you. What? <laughs> I have a parachute. Fantastic. Parachutes are hard to come by and are difficult to make yourself. After all, you'd only want to entrust your life in a quality product, not something makeshift you've patched together yourself. Um... Trust my life, but of course, I, I mean, I mean, of course not. So, that's the last of my gear. Excellent. We could get going if only my damn machine would work. But you can't find a thing in this house. No nitroglycerin, no dragon hide armor, no concentrated pillars of salt, no full mithril jacket bullets, nothing. What... what do you need all that for? For what? It's a war! But we just want to deliver the ring to the Archmage. Don't you think a sled... W what? I need a nitroglycerin substitute. Something highly explosive. The only thing that comes to mind is good old dwarven ale. Dwarven ale? Oh. Devilish stuff. We reduced complete countries to ash and rubble with it. We loved the smell of dwarven ale in the morning. Okay, I'll get you some dwarven ale. Anything else? Yes, I need a cog. A 5 8 inch screw steel sprocket, straight beveled, hard chrome plated, BSA threaded flange with right hand thread and lock ring locking. It's not a standard size and I can't find one anywhere. Hmm. A 5 8 inch screw steel sprocket, straight beveled, hard chrome plated, BSA threaded flange with right hand thread and locking <laughs> lock ring. Sounds familiar. Come back when you've got the stuff. I'll sort out the rest. But bear in mind, the Dark Lord knows all of your thoughts. Right. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, more stuff to find. <laughs> Um, I guess we will go back and get some Dwarven Ale or something. 
I don't know. Now we're walking around with our helmet. <laughs> All right, so. Dwarf Bastion, please. Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hey, I will burn. When the robot started in on you, I never thought you'd beat it. <laughs> it was an epic scrap, lad, an epic scrap. Dwarf against machine, nature against technology, mind over matter. Mind? How did you destroy it? I hit him as hard as I could with heavy objects until sparks started <laughs> leaping out of him. Oh, a shrewd tactic. Too right. But he did land a couple on me. Look what he did to my beard. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. I was so tanked up with ale and adrenaline I didn't even notice. Um, Mr. Master Brewer, assuming I were to need some dwarven ale... Dwarven ale? <laughs> it's not allowed, unfortunately. Why not? Have you heard about the explosion on Mount Winterpeak? The volcanic eruption? Ha 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 Volcanic eruption! Deep under that mountain was the finest ale brewery in the whole dwarven world. My dad took me there when I was nothing but two beer crates tall. Can you imagine how ailed up we were? Uh, kind of. What happened? Ah, well. Some so-and-so cocked up, and boom! <laughs> that was that! All over for dwarven ale brewing. After the accident, it was banned as a substance of enjoyment. The sharp taste, the warmth in the throat, gone forever. Now it's only used in warfare and in the alchemy industry. But you do know how to brew dwarven ale, don't you? Does a one-legged duck swim in a circle? Of course I know! I'm the master brewer! It's not difficult, either. First, you get barley germinated in a malt house, then let them bloat up after leaving them dormant for a bit. Then kiln dry the green malt, keeping it turned, of course smell it, making sure that the husks don't get destroyed. The husks? What are... Then mash the whole lot in a mash tun, obviously using a decoction procedure. After the iodine test, we get on with purifying and separating the malt from the beer wort in a slatted filter bed. Of course, but... In other words, we let the draft run through the mash pot. We then put the first wort in the brewing kettle, let it simmer and add the hops. We let the wort settle to remove the trub crust, add the yeast and then leave to ferment. Then we run everything through the pebble filter. That's all fair enough. Then it gets more complicated. Stop! What? We're just getting to the exciting part! I'm sure we were, but I just abandoned the idea of brewing some dwarven ale myself. Well, whatever you think. Let's assume I need a small tankard of dwarven ale really, really urgently. Could you brew it for me? Uh, could do, uh, but I'm not going to. It's not allowed. Oh, come on. Who's going to notice? When was the last time another dwarf came by to visit us? Mm, that's a fair time back. You see? Wouldn't you just love a nice cold dwarven ale tonight to celebrate your victory over the robot? Oh, dwarven ale is nectar. I'd certainly enjoy a wee taste of it again. No, oh, it's not going to happen. I'm missing a few ingredients. And if I get them, would you brew up two tankards then? One for me and one for yourself? Aye. It's a deal. You find me the missing ingredients and I'll brew some dwarven ale. Yay! Okay, what do you need? Crystal clear mountain water, Check. hops, and some barley for Check. malting. But that's... Uh, that's it? No, no deviled fire, salamander eyes, or dragon's breath, that sort of thing? Nope! Water, hops, and malt. Uh, then there's just a few secret ingredients and uh, naturally synthesized aromatic substances and uh, 
A couple of E numbers. <laughs> uh, but I've already got them here. <laughs> okay. Water, hops, and barley. I'll get them. I have a pot of crystal clear water for the dwarven ale. Show me. Mm. That water's very good. We can use this. Here's some barley from my mum's kitchen. Can it be used for brewing? Mm. It's not the best, but it'll have to do. Where am I supposed to find hops? Do you have any idea where I can get the hops? Oh, I'm sorry, but that thieving rat took the best part of five sacks. I've not enough left. I've got to be careful with it. The rat, huh? Hmm. Oh. I have to go. Enjoy the celebration. Yeah, yeah. I think we have to stick our hand in here. Hmm. If the rat has stolen that many hops, it might still have something stored in there. There's something in there. Something round. Ugh. Hopefully it's not a giant rat dropping. It's a single hop. This is probably all that's left of the stock of hops. What is a hop? I have no idea what a hop is, but sure. We got one. Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hi, hi, Wilbur. I've got some hops for the ale. Oh <laughs> no, my lad. That's not enough. I need more hops. A proper handful. <gasps> but I, I can't find any more. We can grow. Oh well, that's it as far as the dwarven ale's concerned. But you can plant the hops. You'll have enough next year. <laughs> uh, I have to go. Enjoy the celebration. Actually Yeah, yeah. Actually we have super fertilizer. Let's go get ourselves some hops. Yeah. Alright. Put the hops in. Okay, I'll plant the hop in the soil. Let's see what happens. I really can't imagine this stuff. Wow. Good fertilizer, that. <laughs> nah. Wow. A huge hop plant with tons of corns. I've picked about 10 corns. That should be enough for the dwarven ale. Hope so. Let's go get our explosives. I mean, uh, ale. Drink. Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hi, hi, Wilbur. I've got some hops for the ale. Is this enough? Ho, ho, that's enough. I hope you haven't been whipping stuff out of my stock. No. Well, only indirectly. And that means I've got all I need to brew the lovely dwarven ale. <laughs> Right, it's all go now then. You go do that with your synthesized aromas and E numbers. Sounds like a coffee pot to me or a teapot. Oh, he's got it. Hey, laddie, just watch out that you don't get any of that in your eyes. It's dangerous stuff. I'll be very careful. Thanks very much, sir. Well, tell me, Wilbur, what do you need all that junk for? The dwarven ale and all the other stuff that you've been dragging out of here the whole evening? Well, it's because of the ring. I need it. Grandad's helping me get the ring to the human town safe. Well, quickly. <laughs> oh, Wilbur, it's dangerous for a young gnome like yourself out there. I know. But I promised that gremlin, and I believe it really could be important. It is. And I'd like to get out of here and achieve something. Taste some adventure, eh? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that the ring is all that important. Uh, not everybody's born for having adventures, my lad. But maybe you really do need to get out of here. Really? Aye, laddie. You still live with your parents. And you keep company with a very interesting, intelligent old dwarf. 
<laughs> but that can't go on forever, can it now? So, if you do leave and go off on an adventure, even if it's just a sea stone, then maybe you'll come back and visit and tell me all about it then, eh? I promise. Don't forget us. You're going to have to excuse me now. I've got an appointment. All right, bye. <laughs> this looks like the muti mutant slime. A beer tankard full of dwarven ale. The tankard is hot and the ale is bubbling a bit. I that... think I want to get rid of this stuff fast. Yeah. Yeah. I second that. That looks kind of nasty, actually. And Oops. down we go. It couldn't do it faster. All right. All righty. So, we will give this to Grandpa. Um, excuse me, Colonel Grandad. Yes, report back. Here's the dwarven ale, Grandad. Oh, my goodness, we must be careful with this. That means we are only missing the cog. Dismissed! Well then, I'll, I'll let you get on with your work. Oh yeah, I forgot yes, about the cog. and get a move on. We haven't got much time. But bear in mind, the Dark Lord knows all of your thoughts. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay, so, wait. Oh, maybe there's a cog in Nemo? Ooh. It's stuck. Poor thing. Aww. The flying fish is immobilized. Somehow I have to open it to get the cog. Toolbox. Shouldn't be a problem with the right tool. Oh, we have the cog. There you are, a 5 8 inch screw steel sprocket, straight beveled, hard chrome plated, BSA threaded flange with right hand thread and lock ring locking. Hmm, maybe that cog wasn't all that important. Fly. Oh, maybe it was important. <laughs> Special magic cog? At a glance, a cog, but in detail I'd say it's a 5 8 inch screw. But I'm not exactly an expert. Alright, um, Grandad. Excuse me, Colonel Grandad. Yes, report back. Here's the cog, Grandad. I had to break my flying fish for that. War always involves sacrifice. Your flying fish was a hero. One of our best. We will honor his memory. Uh -huh. Now I have everything I need. It won't take long now. Prepare yourself for takeoff. Take off? <laughs> uh, hmm. That's what you meant by take off. Absolutely. I've aimed her at the town of the humans. Betsy 2 was, of course, designed to shoot grenades. But I'm confident that she'll get your capsule there, too. Confident? <laughs> get me out of here. Please, Grandad. Listen, my boy. I'm proud of you. You're doing something very brave. Sure, Wilbur. I'd like you to have these. Your old aviator goggles. Oh, Grandad, I, I didn't think... Too slow, my boy! <laughs> Fire! Oops. Good luck! That's pretty big. Where is it? <laughs> he still hasn't told us, Mother. He will. Who else knows about it? The Archmage won't know about it yet. We were able to intercept the servant, as you know. But... But? An elf, Mother. 
she tried to free MacGuffin, she might know something. She needs to be watched. Very well. And now, Mr. Professor, let us have a little chat. Meanwhile, at the foot of the mountains... Oh. oh well, no problem. I am an elf, and I'm fit. What now? I'll get the book out of MacGuffin's secret cellar and take it to the Archmage. No, they were all gone when I got there. They collected the cage and were off. Now it's up to us to get the book. Of course I don't have to, but... Well, what else am I going to do? It appears to be very important. And even if it isn't important, those shady fellows want to have that book. It's better that we get it out of the cellar before they get their grubby mitts on it. Then don't help me. Why don't you just fly home? Just don't tell my parents anything. Ungrateful feathered fowl. <laughs> All right, we're control. We're Ivo again. Woohoo! A pumpkin patch, not particularly well cared for. Presumably, MacGuffin spends a lot of time buried in his books and not enough time in his garden. The pumpkin should have been harvested long ago. Some are already starting to go mouldy. Ew! <laughs> Good for Halloween. A tatty wonky scarecrow. Its clothing has been nibbled by mice but the hat has something about it. A scarecrow that doesn't even scare Cheap Cheap is clearly of no use whatsoever. <laughs> oh, Cheap Cheap. And what kind of an artifact might this be about? Aren't you afraid of the scarecrow at all? Why is that scarecrow not scaring you? Yes, certainly. And how? Normally you're the first to take flight. Do you have any idea which artifact could be so powerful that it could make someone into the ruler of the world? No, that's been lost to the depths of the ocean. No, that's been thrown back into the same fire that was used to forge it. <laughs> no, I haven't got a clue. It must be something that no one bargained for. Something that no one has ever looked for. It'll be in the Gremlins book. If only I had it already. Good luck, little one, and don't get up to any mischief. All right, so the, the second thing there was um, obviously a reference to uh, Lord of the Rings, but I don't know what the ocean thing was referencing, like Atlantis or something? Look at the There's a stone in the undergrowth. There's something written on it, but I can't see what it is. That could be a little gravestone. I can't remove the undergrowth with my bare hands. It's very dense and has thorns. Aww, you're an elf. Come on. Ooh, watering can. An old watering can made out of metal. It's small, even by gremlin standards. Take it. Yeah, we got a watering can. An old watering can made out of... All right. A pile of logs. There is no way that MacGuffin will get through the winter with such a small amount, not even autumn. Take a bit of kindling. Three should be enough. All right. Three dry logs from the gremlin stock. Look at the a stove. large brick fireplace. The fire grates on the outside, not inside the house. That's a bit unusual, but it does make sense if the professor doesn't wish to have an open fire inside. MacGuffin has a lot of flammable objects. He presumably doesn't want an open fire and sparks flying around in the house. No, I think that's... The warmth will spread through to the walls inside. Hmm, yeah, that's a good... Little metal frame. A swinging metal frame. You can hang pots or something of that sort onto it and then swing it over the fire. I should hang something from it. Ah, watering can? That makes no sense if the watering can is empty. Meh. I'd say this is a pretty basic millstone. Grain is tipped into the hole above, and you then turn the upper stone. The flower then comes out of the side. I'd say this is a pretty... The flower... Yes, yes. Okay, well, here's water, right? 
The groundwater is only a few meters down in this region. Presumably the well isn't very deep. The well rope is fastened to the windlass. Doesn't look particularly strong. Hmm, that was suspiciously easy. Um, you're doing it the wrong way. The rope no. is broken and the bucket's probably at the bottom of the well where it's of no use to anyone. Okay, we'll get water with our watering can. That should hold. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, we're getting water. Woohoo! It worked. This means that I have a gremlin watering can full of water. Woohoo! That is awesome. That's gonna help us save the world. Right? Okay. Once they get going, they'll burn for a few hours. And, uh, let's see, watering can. And then we'll, uh... The watering can with the cold well water is hanging on the metal arm. Now we just have to, uh, light stuff up. Strange. Someone's fitted a wooden shutter in front of the little window. Looks like the shutter can be opened. It's pretty high up. A daring structure, and just like the whole house, pretty wonky. Doesn't look as if it'll last long. Oopsie daisy. Can we speak to Cheap Cheap about something? We'll go into the house. Better not. I haven't got any news and he'll only start reproaching me again. Alright. Enter the house. Here we are. Typical bachelor. Everything in a mess. Plates, pots, cups, covered with a sticky mixture of dust and fat. Dead flies. Oh, yuck. <laughs> I'm definitely not tidying up here. Why hasn't the gremlin's companion sorted this out? Because, uh, he's, uh, you know, trouble. <laughs> a wooden tub, about half full of water. Oh, great. This has the professor's washing floating around in it. <laughs> White shirts, grey socks, red underpants. <laughs> a wooden tub, about half full of water. Oh, yes! His underpants. Hmm. Would appear to be a mirror frame. There are still a few broken shards of the old mirror around the edges. The mirror's turned so it reflects the fireplace. Strange. A carpenter's cup. It looks old. You Not really it? worth a closer look. Sure. What's that? A box with some kind of glass eye. Seems to be hanging directly in front of the gable window. I haven't got a clue what it's for. Nope. Um... A small old-fashioned shield. The inside is highly polished. Take it. The back of the fireplace. When MacGuffin wanted to heat his food up, he just needed to put it into one of those little stoves. It's pretty convenient. Ooh, jelly glowfish. A standard jelly glowfish. They're everywhere around here. This one here isn't glowing anymore, and won't ever again. No, Jelly not. glowfish are really quite frugal animals. They need water and a little bit of food every now and then. I guess this one lacked the latter. Alright, bag of tools. I think these are all the things that the professor uses on his digs. A brush, a little shovel, a sieve. Take the sieve. I'll take the sieve. The rest looks pretty useless. Alright. That's books, tool. books, and more books. Most are ancient tomes. They appear to be written in just about every language. The book that MacGuffin told me about is hidden in the cellar. These books aren't of interest. A large handwritten book. It looks like it's been used a lot. Read it. Read what he wrote. It's the Gremlin's diary. Perhaps I'll find some hints about the cellar. Let's take a closer look. Who would have ever thought that it would fall to someone like me, an old archaeologist, to stop this madness? 
and I didn't find the key to it on one of my expeditions, not in dark dungeons or in fiery mountains. Oh no, I discovered the answer in an old book. He must mean the book that was hidden in the cellar, in which the information about the artifact's whereabouts is written. Hmm, the notes end mid-sentence. I wonder why I haven't heard anything from Archmage Alistair yet. I sent Beetle out with a message for him yesterday morning. I hope nothing has... That was the last entry. There are others before it. Well, we know, definitely know. We definitely know that was the last entry, right? Hmm, old parchment and yellowing papers, filled with texts in many different foreign languages. Adonish and Westron, Quenya and Sindarin, and technical drawings in Kuzdol. Take some documents. Unimaginably valuable documents. A pile of parchments and papers, very old and a bit fragile. I'm gonna burn them, aren't I? A little wooden box. Doesn't look like an antique or anything particularly valuable. It has beautiful workmanship, though. It's locked. Meh. A strange stone head. It's been roughly hewn, but has a few fine embellishments. Perhaps a memento from one of the professor's expeditions. All right. Let's look at the wood wooden box. A stone casket placed in a wooden box. The box looks very cheap. It could be one of those storage containers. The stone chest is decorated with two angels and has writing on it too. I can't read it. Open the chest. What's likely to happen, eh? Sand. Hmm. Is it me? Or has it just got much warmer in here? I don't know. Sieve through it. Sift through the sand. There is something in there. A little brass key. Ooh. Could that be for... Yeah, I'm, I, I know. We are going to look at the sarcophagus. I'm going to do other stuff first. Let's see. There's a bit of paper in the box. Now, what's it the say? The paper's densely covered with writing. Deus ex machina. The ghost in the machine is the heading. There's also a drawing of a stone figure. At its feet is a vessel containing liquid. Hmm. Let's take a look. The ghost in the machine is wise to all the secrets of this house. That's what's written here. Hmm. Blah, blah. Pour the fuel into the bowl at the foot of the machine to awaken the ghost. Fuel? Ah, oh, here. Grind the beans and tip the powder into boiling water, then pour the mixture into the bowl. We've already had that bit. You'll get the beans from the machine. Hmm, strange. A machine that's meant to be familiar with all the secrets of the house. Yep. Indeed. Looks like the base for a statue. It's made out of stone and it's covered with strange characters. There's a six-sided indentation on the base. Perhaps the mounting for a statue. There's a six-sided... Okay, let's look at Looks the like a very ancient sarcophagus. Oh, strange. There are hinges on it, just like a door. Let's open it. What could happen? Hey. Shame. Just a stinky mummy. Hmm. What have we here? What are you doing, Mortimer? What the... Did you... Um... Did you just speak? Uh... You speak? Me? No. Well, uh... Yes, you do, quite obviously. <laughs> what is obvious? That you can and do speak. But of course... But you just said that you didn't. Why are you being so strange, Mortimer? I... I'm not Mortimer. Where is Mortimer? You mean MacGuffin, the gremlin archaeologist who lives here, yes? What? Mortimer. Yes? You're called Mortimer. No, of course not. I think we're finished with this conversation. <laughs> I think you are slowly losing your marbles, Mortimer. <laughs> 
He is a funny Presumably one. Presumably the sarcophagus lacks oxygen. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Alright, so we have to find a machine that knows everything and will give us beans to grind and put in water. Uh, I don't exactly remember where it is, but I know what beans it is and stuff. So we'll do that um, uh, next time. So, you know, and we're going to talk more with the awesome mummy in the sarcophagus. Woohoo! Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I uh, hope we're, uh, you're enjoying the game, and I'll see you later.